Hello there, everybody, and welcome. In this video, I got 10 tips and tricks for you if you want to tackle the veteran and viceroy difficulties. These are your stepping stones into the prestige layers of the game, and until you get your hang of the game, they can be really, really hard. I struggled a lot at it as well when I began, and with these things, I hope you will get through these tests. As these tips are all completely independent of RNG, I came up with these basic strategies by myself and they made up for a pretty solid way of winning. Alright, so the very first thing that I want to emphasize if you come from the very low difficulty levels in number one is that the storms scale way harder and you need to pay good attention to the high hostility level thingies here. Some of them are really nasty, and you won't see them until you go for Viceroy and higher difficulties. Some of these actually kill people if the hostility level is too high, and many, many other things. For example, this unnatural erosion thing is also very, very wicked, as you don't want your resource nodes to be destroyed, but without oil, you cannot pay the tax, so you either focus the oil production in this scenario, or you try to avoid hitting hostility for under all circumstances. Either way, it's really annoying if you don't pay attention to these things, and they can be really easy to overlook, but from this point on, you really gotta pay attention to these random thingies at the beginning of the game, or they might really destroy you after half an hour or more. Now, number two, I want to talk about your timing when it comes down for your first danger clades. I highly recommend you to open up your first danger clade either on year two or on year three, depending on your own experience and play style. Build yourself a trade post when you open up the clade, or shortly after you have opened up the clade, not before, because this way the first trader will pretty much instantaneously pop up, because the timer for the trader does run in the background even though you don't have built your trade post. This way you can check out your first danger clade, either you can resolve it with your own resources, a big recommendation from my side here is avoid burning your starting coal and save it up for your first event, often resolves the entire job, or you just summon a trader with this little trick by building your trading post just at the right moment and then you can more often than not buy something that can resolve your problem but either way expand into your first danger glade as quick as possible as these little glades most of the time don't yield enough rewards to be as nearly as good as these so you really profit a lot from taking on your first adventures here as soon as possible, as you will gain a lot of building room, a lot of strong resource nodes, and a lot of other goodies out of these adventures that spawn on the glades. Number three is a very short but very, very important point. Avoid triple speed. Avoid playing too fast. Many of my losses came from me being too darned convinced that I did everything right, slamming through the highest speed and then crashing against the wall because there were things I did overlook. At the end of the day, the best way that I can recommend you to play it is play on very slow to, uh, speed at burst until you notice that there's really nothing to do anymore. My personal standard speed is 1.5, and then when I notice I don't have anything to do anymore, I slowly scale up to two, and sometimes up to three, if I really notice that there's nothing happening at once, slamming the pause button immediately when something comes up that deserves my attention. But really, triple speed is a false friend that can lure you into your losses quite easily, because you just notice problems way too late. You don't have the luxury to save and reload in this game, therefore play accordingly. Number four, tools. These things are victory points, basically. So with tools, you can do so many things. Many glade events can be resolved with tools. You find these resource caches all over the place. And with tools, you can transform them into money and reputation, which is amazing. And you also, ah, well, pretty much can perceive these tools as 
tokens to buy reputation points at the end of the day. More often than not, it translates directly into this. Therefore, buildings that produce tools are pretty, pretty valuable. Even if you are unable to get yourself hands on a production of metal bars, this colony, for example, doesn't produce any metal bars themselves. You often get these out of quest rewards. You can buy them at the trader and at the at every point, it is always cheaper to make things yourself rather than buying them. So every step in the production chain of the tools that you can't skip is even more profit. But if you can produce your uh, ingots for yourself, that is no reason not to draft at least one tools building to have access to the production of these yourself. Because I have won so many games by just brute forcing my way through with tools. So. It's really cool. Either you use them for reputation points or they are also a pretty much a component of all these Danger Glade events. There's almost on all of them at least one solution that you can force through just by having tools. Therefore, get yourself some tools, favor them on the rewards for your orders, buy them from the traders, whatever. They are really worth your time. The other part, very close to that, point five, parts. Parts are also very, very invaluable, and you need to pay attention to these as well. It is very easy, especially in the lower difficulties, to um, think that parts are very valuable, and you can just sell them away to the trader, but you should perceive parts as something that they are basically tokens for resource generation. Without parts, you can't build the buildings that require that produce resources for you. Pretty much every collection camp has parts in the building recipe. And if you don't have parts, you can't build more resource collectors. And that's really bad. Or infrastructure buildings like the warehouses also rely on parts. Therefore, if you want to sell them, do it only if you know you don't need it that many. I've had many runs where I had way too many parts because I got them out of the order packages and whatnot, so I sold them because they're really worth quite some money. But it's really important that you pay good attention to how many of them you need, and at the end of the day, I personally think it's always smarter to use them for even more expansion rather than selling them, but it's, uh, it's, it's a question of situation. Sometimes you just need that money quite badly, and either way, I want to point out that these are nigh impossible to produce yourself. I don't know if there's still workshops in the game and the early access there were. They are valuable, and use them accordingly, don't squander them, and Keep in mind that every part invested into a building is always getting brought back if you destroy them, so they are never permanently invested. Number six, I want to talk about expansion and exploration. So I already mentioned in point two how I think about the danger glades, but as a general thought, try to open a glade at least every second year or sometimes it's even smart to do that every year, with a priority of trying to focus into as many dangerous glades as possible and only open small glades if you really have to. Most of the time, the small glades only yield a very small amount of resources and they stack up into the hostility meter. And as you see here, this is a small thing that I opened up. It, it had a treasure stack in it, but apart from that, only a couple of routes at one event, nothing more. Compared to this little beauty here, you have several co uh, collecting nodes, you have caches in there, so the comparison to a regular node, is uh, to a regular glade, is really, really big. So therefore, try to explore, but try to also exploit. It's no use if you just cl uh, clobber open one glade after another. Sometimes it's good if you have keystones for a cornerstone skills for that. But generally, it's the uh, for me, the pacing is I open up a glade, then I exploit it for a year or two. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it goes faster, and then I immediately open up the next one. It's also important that you should put down a hearth on every occasion where you can't, as hearths lower the force hostility. They are really, really important. Just keep in mind, your fuel consumption goes up with every hearth. As a rule of thumb, try to get yourself at least three hearths per game. 
Everything above that is luxury. I've won many or most of my games with roughly three halves, and that's pretty much that. You can also upgrade them and get yourself the uh, encampment upgrades. Here I actually derped on that. Let's quickly change that. And the really cool thing is that you gain the uh, bonuses from these areas here several times. Really, really uh, powerful stuff. And, of course, exploring further across the map is extremely important because of these caches. As you see, I have really a lot of these and I didn't even touch them. I like to keep them in my backhand to open them when I need them or keep them for the remaining game to win the game out of it as soon as I can. So you always have nice options as these thingies yield the most various rewards that you could imagine. Pretty cool if you want to get yourself a problem resolved in your order tab that you just can't produce yourself. Now, number seven, I want to talk about Amber. Amber is a really, really important resource, and it is the resource to solve problems with. You can use Amber to buy stuff at the merchant, but not only, not only that, the merchants also sell cornerstones, skills, only for raw Amber. You can gain Amber very well with trade routes. I strongly recommend these, as these are a really massive way of gaining money. Provision packs aren't hard to produce, sometimes you are lucky and you get yourself a cornerstone that automatically produces these. But raw amber is really powerful as it is a ways and means to power up your colony and pretty much every trader gives you the ability to resolve problems via amber. You're short on, on food? Buy some raw food and process it for amber. You want more tools? buy the resources or the tools themselves for Amber. You can practically resolve any problem that you got if the trader arrives with the proper goods. Therefore, focus into some way in every colony to gain Amber. You should always have one point of income. Which brings me directly to number eight. I want to talk about focused industries and purposefully over overproducing things. So, for example, this colony, I went hard into producing agricultural goods. I stacked up cornerstones like crazy, and I'm producing lots of flour and all these things. Most importantly, though, I want to boil it down to whatever you produce way too much of, you can sell it away. And if you notice that your colony is really good at producing something, you should also consider that in your draft decisions. If you have a lot of uh, fertile soil and you were lucky to draft a plantation and a farm, for example, you might focus your entire production into food production at that point. If you get lucky, you draw another cornerstone, whatever. The really good thing here is it yields you something that you just can transform yet again into amber, which then can transform into something that you want. In this game, every overproduction is worth something. At some point you will be, oh great that I have 300 of these. You will notice that at some point, so never be shy away from overproducing, but don't invest into something if you need your workers elsewhere. Very, very important. All right. Number nine, I want to talk about the racial specials. On the higher difficulty levels, you can gain a lot of leeway while, by adapt, uh, getting into their um, specializations. Every culture is good at producing something. So, for example, the lizards here will have a chance of double yields when you put them into animal or meat production. And they will be happier, if you go for the second thing, if you put them into a warm environment. You see these um, little icons there? And it's really, really recommendable to synergize and mix and match as much as possible there. It is so powerful to have double yields. These are insanely powerful. And it is really cool to have very happy citizens. As you see here, my lizards are pretty nuts and happy, but I don't do too much. I have a little bit of extra food for them, but here we have a combination of racial housing and lots of workplaces they love. If you follow the racial specials, you can really make them easily happy and be productive as hell. So go for these, focus these, and uh, go for it as much as you can. It's worth the micromanagement. Number 10, I want to summarize, summarize into a classical victory path. 
So you usually will win the game by doing three things. First of all, you will, of course, fulfill these orders. Duh. Nothing much to say about it. It's a questing system that yields reputation points. It's just powerful. The second way is via resolve. You should always try to make your citizens happy somehow. I personally recommend you to focus the largest uh, site, the largest population in your colony, as these guys will crank out more reputation the more people you manage to make happy. So if you only have two or three humans, don't focus your production too hard into that, focus your production into making the majority of your population happy. It's always the same uh, order of things, first the housing, then the complex food, then the services. Services are not a must-have, they are quite optional, I've won many games without them, don't stress yourself to out, uh, out too hard if you don't manage to fulfill them, but they're really sweet if you can do them, and often having one species fully fulfilled on all their needs is a victory condition on its own. The third way to victory is earning reputation via events, random things that happen on your map. I've been already talking a lot about these caches. They all are the part of the third victory path for me. And you can also include reputation rewards from Glade events. They also fit into that scheme and reputation gains from the Cornerstone market. These three things, the, the, these sources often provide that extra reputation that you need. And my personal recommendation is try to have a finger in every one of these three paths. But as soon as you notice that the RNG blesses you with one hell of a way to focus into one of these three paths a little bit more, go for it. Usually it's absolutely worth it. I had many runs where I focused into trade like a madman. I had runs where the production chains via cornerstones and draft were so good that I could make a utopia for a certain species. Sometimes I was just super productive on the tools market and I cracked open one cache after another while having a relatively unhappy populace. There's so many ways to win the game, but always boils down to these three sources of victory points. Orders, reputation, and random events. If you follow these things, you should be easily cracking open the way into the prestige layers. And I hope you enjoyed this video and took something out of it. Feel free to leave me your comments. I'm always happy to hear back from you. I appreciate you watching this. Feel free to leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and check out the description box. There's Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. I deeply appreciate you guys supporting this channel so much. Thanks. And a big, big thanks to you watching this video, because these videos would be useless without people like you. And you watched the entire ad roll. Thanks. That's really nice of you. So, have a good day, and see you next time.